Today is uh, Monday, May the 13th, 2024, and I'd like to read out of the Message Bible. It's a paraphrase, not a translation. So he took the words that were translated, the author of this did, and, and he put it in a modern vernacular. I'm beginning at verse 10 in the Message Bible of Matthew 13. The disciples came up and asked, why do you tell stories? And he replied, you've been given insight in God's kingdom. You know how it works. Not everybody has this gift and this insight. It hasn't been given to them. Whenever someone has a ready heart for this, the insights and understandings flow freely. But if there's no readiness, any trace of receptivity soon disappears. That's why I tell stories, to create readiness, to nudge the people toward receptive insight. In their present state, they, can't, they can stare till doomsday and not see it. Listen till they're blue in the face and not get it. I don't want Isaiah's forecast all over again. Your eyes are open, but you don't hear a thing. Your, excuse me, your ears are open, but you don't hear a thing. Your eyes are awake, but you don't see a thing. The people are blockheads. They stick their fingers in the ears so they won't have to listen. They screw their eyes shut so they won't have to look, so they don't have to deal with me face to face. And let me heal them. But you have God-blessed eyes, eyes that see, and God-blessed ears, ears that hear. A lot of people, prophets and humble believers among them would have gotten, would have given anything to see what you are seeing, to hear what you are hearing, but never had the chance. So this week, in the five days of our video devotionals, I, I want to discuss learning how to stay in a position to hear God speak to us. And Jesus in the text we use today, makes it clear, at least in my opinion, that God is speaking, but many times something is interfering with our hearing because we, God speaks, but we don't hear, like our ears are shut. What comes to your mind when someone comes up to you and says, God spoke to me, Most, God spoke to me, God said something to me, maybe he said something to me about you, and I'm telling you. How do you perceive the person who says God spoke to me? Do you think they're a little whacked? Or that maybe they're on some drug? Do you think God still speaks to his followers? And let's take that a step further. Do you believe that God wants to speak to you and order your steps? What do you think God would like to talk to you about? Now, I am coming from a predisposed position that God speaks to his people. There are many verses of scripture that address this, but my purpose is not to prove that God speaks to his people, but to proceed from that fact to discuss how to stay in a place to hear God at all times. I believe there's one major key to hearing from God. And as that key is learned, we will discover there are many ingredients that cause that key to work. But we must remember the key is what's important. The ingredients are going to be a lifetime work in progress. But before I share that key today, here on Monday, I want to relate some of my personal experiences because I believe I've heard from God. I think the first time I recall hearing from God was I was probably in the third to the fourth grade in a little town called Yuma, Colorado, where my dad was pastoring the uh, Assembly of God Church. We had some special services and every night, Every night I came to the altar. And I remember that after about the third night that my dad pulled me into to his office and, and told me I didn't have to come to the altar every night. And I told him I felt I had sinned again today and, and I, I need to come to the altar and repent. And so he took me to 1 John 1, 9 where it says if we confess our sin, God, he is faithful to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he said, you don't need to come up front every time you've sinned because you can personally sit and repent of your sin as soon as God reveals to you that you've sinned. After that, many times I, I heard God often through the Bible. I, I, it's like a light went on in the scripture and I felt like God was saying that verse directly to me. I could relate a number of those instances, but I'd like to, I'd like to refer to just one more instance. The most vivid was when I was 14 years and 10 months old. It was July, 1964, 
I was at church camp in Hardesty, Oklahoma. My dad was pastoring in Periton, Texas, and all the teens in that church, they, they joined with a, a multi-denominational uh, church camp that was held up in Hardesty in the panhandle of Oklahoma. And that, that particular night, the service was just, it seemed like the Spirit of God just breathed on that service in a special way, just a moving of God's Spirit. After the preaching, the altar was filled. I think every camper was at the altar. And there was a lot of weeping and crying out to God. I, I know kids were repenting of their sin and some were just meeting with God, seeking hungry after God. I was one of those seeking hungry after God. And I felt impressed by the Spirit of God to leave the tabernacle where the church meeting was at and to go out into the woods and there were some picnic tables out there. And I went out there and I sat at one of those picnic tables and I believe I heard the voice of God speak audibly to me and said, I'm calling you to preach the gospel. Now, I can't prove to you that I heard an audible voice. It was so impressive that someone was standing right in front of me saying, I'm calling you to preach the gospel. And I said, yes, I will do that. I told the camp director that night that I heard God call me to the ministry. And he said, okay, tomorrow you're going to do the devotions before lunch. And I still remember what I spoke about out of Matthew 21 and Matthew 27, where this crowd had gathered in the triumphant entry of Christ into Jerusalem. They were saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Glory to God in the highest. Hosanna. And I believe some of those same people were in the multitude that the Pharisees and scribes stirred up before Pilate and they were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And I related how many times as teens were moved by our emotions and at one moment, we're in church worshiping and praising God with the church people. The next, we're a different crowd, and we're denying the Lord. I don't know what crowd you're in right now. I don't even know if you want to hear from God. But I want to ask you, are you willing to hear from him? Because God wants to speak to you. Will you pray with me? Father, in Jesus' name, you said in Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. I believe you want to talk to each of us. Sometimes you use the word, sometimes you use other people. But I believe since you've made us to be a kingdom of priests and kings before our God, that you would speak to us directly. I'm asking you to help us to be still and be ready for you to speak. And then listen carefully to what you say. Thank you. Amen. Okay, I pray you're ready. Let God speak. Be filled with his joy today and just take a little time to be silent before the Lord. Have a great day.